Wrestling fans, you're listening to the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast with your host, JJ The Voice Purdom and Charles Money Marquez. Today on the program, we're talking about Money in the Bank 2024. It literally just happened a few moments ago. What an awesome show. As far as Money in the Bank programs, Charles, this today, I think, was the best Money in the Bank thus far. What's your opinion? Just all told, the entire program as a whole. Yeah, that was definitely an awesome Money in the Bank. Uh, probably, as you said, one of the best ever. Man, the the final match, obviously outstanding, but... Boy, the women's Money in the Bank match. Yeah, I think people are going to be talking about that match for quite a while. Let's go ahead and run down the card, some of the things that transpired. Uh, Right out the gate, we started hot and heavy with the six-man Money in the Bank men's ladder match uh, for the Money in the Bank briefcase. This year, the combatant list was super hot and heavy, and the guy who won it might shock some of you, but it was Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, who's been embroiled in this just amazing feud with CM Punk that's just went since January in the Royal Rumble. And then that crazy viral meme that started out with uh, the CM Punk cemetery plot deal with Drew McIntyre kind of kneeling by it and laughing about his WrestleMania dreams being dashed. Uh, It's just been incredible. And this was just another chapter in that great story with Drew McIntyre winning the money in the bank in the men's ladder match. Do you think that was the right guy to win that particular match tonight, starting off the show, Chuck? Oh, absolutely. And obviously, as we saw later, that was the perfect uh, match. I was thinking uh, Jay Uso was going to come out on top the way they had been building him up. And of course, you know, he had been on all the, uh, the promos and everything else, uh, but a little bit surprising, but obviously the way uh, it ended up playing out was uh, of course the perfect way to go. Yeah, it it was unbelievably well told storytelling. Again, goes right back to WWE with Triple H at the helm being really narrative driven and being able to tell some incredible stories that transcend just one or two nights of wrestling, but really go months and you know hopefully you know a year of storytelling between some phenomenal entertainers. Uh, of course, later on in the night we had the world title match. We'll go ahead and jump forward right now. Uh, we had the world champion El Campeon, uh, one and only Demian Priest defending the championship against the returning Seth freaking Rollins. And, of course, Drew McIntyre comes out, cashes in his Money in the Bank briefcase. It automatically becomes a triple threat match, only to be screwed by the returning CM Punk, just obliterating Drew McIntyre with a steel chair, leaving him laying and making him fair play after hitting him with the world championship belt, and he was easily pinned by Damian Priest. Priest retains the title. I know, Chuck, that had to be the outcome you were looking for. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm a big super fan of Damian Priest, and hey, look, whatever it takes to get the one, two, three, and that's exactly what happened tonight. Man, CM Punk is looking Better and better every week on television. Man, he screwed Drew McIntyre yet again. Great storytelling. I can't see, I can't wait to see where they go to next with that. Of course, Sami Zayn defended the Intercontinental Championship uh, against Braun Breaker, who's been on this crazy meteoric rise since he arrived in WWE on the main roster. And uh, I was kind of shocked by the finish to this one as Braun Breaker took the L and Sami Zayn retains the title in a very successful defense of the championship. I love Sami Zayn, but let me be the first one to say, I don't agree with this finish. I think this is the wrong way to go. If you're not ready to put the championship on Braun Breaker, I don't think losing right now when he's red hot is the way to continue to build him up. What do you think, Chuck? Well, excellent match. Obviously, Braun Breaker, this guy is just a star, a superstar. Uh, I think uh, Sami Zayn holding on to the gold in Canada, you know, the hometown crowd got him over on this one. But, man, I think that it's going to be uh, short-lived because man, I, don't, I don't see how Braun Breaker doesn't have gold around his waist sooner rather than later. Man, that guy is so good. Also, we had the six-woman um, ladies 
women in the bank match, uh, money in the bank match. And this for me was kind of a highlight of the night. They really was an excellent match. They did a great job. And I was kind of surprised that for me it was kind of the sleeper. I looked at some of these young talents. And I thought, ah, oh, the experience isn't really there. They did a wonderful job. And I think this was the right result. Of course, Tiffany Stratton comes away as the Money in the Bank winner for the women's briefcase. And I couldn't agree more. I think this was a great choice in a character that is extremely over right now. And of course, they gave her that backstage rub with a little interview, a little program, uh, as it were, with Trish Stratus, who, of course, is a Toronto, Canada legend and a WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah, this was this was my match of the night. Uh, these ladies were phenomenal. All the different uh, spots and all the different, you know, just from start to finish, this thing was excellent. You know, some of the stuff that, you know, Sky was doing. And, of course, you know, towards the end, we thought Chelsea Green uh, being there in Canada in front of her hometown audience, we thought that she was probably going to do it. But, of course, Tiffany Stratton, as you said, is like a runaway train. And I don't think anything or anybody can stop Tiffany Stratton at this point. She is excellent. You know, I, I got to say about that six women tag match, uh, or excuse me, about that, that six person ladder match with the women. The thing that impressed me the most was that it drew my daughter into it. And I think my daughter is going to be a big mm -hmm. wrestling fan now as she was watching the women and just screaming and hooting and hollering for them. And she understood the passion that I have for it because of the athleticism and the stories that could be told. She had her clear cut uh, favorites when she was watching. She loved Chelsea Green and she also loved Tiffany. So Tiffany winning was a big, big uh, celebration in our house. And uh, the Chelsea thing, her being afraid of heights and still trying to climb the ladder was some really entertaining stuff. That lady, there's like nothing that she can't do uh, as far as entertain us uh, when she's on the screen. Uh, the other thing that also was uh, of note was the six-man tag match, the Bloodline. Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, and Solo Sokoa defeat Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. And, of course, Cody's the one who takes the big one, two, three from Solo, which really sets up Solo to be able to challenge for that WWE championship in the future. Chuck, does this automatically make him the next guy, the new tribal chief? who's going to challenge for the championship in the next big premium live event? Possibly, but let me go back really quickly with regard to Jacob Fatu. You and I have been talking about this guy for quite a while. And as you know, I saw him in New Japan at the beginning of the year. And, you know, being up close and seeing, you know, what his skill set is and capability, you know, several months ago, man, this guy is unlike anything I think anybody's seen it in a very long time. But to your point, as far as Solo and Cody Rhodes, I mean, it definitely seems like the next logical thing. Uh, that's quite the faction, uh, the new bloodline. And uh, we'll see where they go. But, man, that is a tough crew. And uh, I think Jacob Fatu might have been, you know, the, the piece, the new enforcer that, you know, basically gets them over uh, where they need to get to. I couldn't agree more. We we hope that you guys will get over to where we need you to go and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to like this video and share it with some of your friends. We appreciate you guys helping grow this channel into the organic monster that it's become. It's nearly 9,000 subscribers right now, but maybe maybe you're on the fence. Maybe you're hesitating. Help us by getting over that line. We're looking to get to 10,000 in the very near future. And we can only do that with your help. We wanted to come out and do this show, Charles, because of Money in the Bank. What an incredible premium live event it was. We love talking wrestling. You can always join in on the conversation by going to our Twitter, our Instagram, at Suplex City Pod. You can always join me over on both of those sites, at JJ Perm. Charles, where can they reach you at? Uh, they can reach me on X at Charles C. Marquez. Guys, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you, and we can't wait to see you again right here in the center of the ring.